And welcome to this live. We're going to be touching on a big topic today. If you're worried sometimes of being liked or of not being liked when you audition or when you play, I hear a lot of actors really struggle with that. So you're not alone, first thing, and there's nothing wrong with you, second thing, and we are going to look at how you can move through that definitely. I think it's the most common what shall I call it, condition that actors are suffering from. Worrying of not being liked by the casting director, by the director, by the other actors on set. But mostly if we take the first step or the first stage, it's during the casting, right? It's when you're in person still, or, um, or I mean, again, or when you're in a self-tape, there are these thoughts that are like, oh, what if... You know, what if they don't like my choice? What if they don't like my acting? What if they don't like my voice? What if they don't like my face? What if they just don't like me? There's something about me that they don't like. I won't get the part, right? So so it's it's really a challenging one because you definitely want to book the part. And so if your thoughts are concerned with you know, they might not like my body, they might not like my face, they might not like where I put my hands, they might not like my choice, they might not like my rhythm. There's a lot of energy that's out there busy trying to do something to calm down that worry and and it's very challenging because you're not having a yummy experience in your audition, you're you're challenged, you're being, you know, you're struggling with that, you're not really being in character. And then it's problematic because the casting won't really see you because you're busy, uh, you know, trying to calm down your worry. So it's it's kind of a recipe that doesn't work. And you may have tried a lot of acting classes, a lot of auditioning classes to make sure that you wouldn't worry about that anymore. And you're still there. So I understand the pain and the frustration. I see so many actors in our community move in and go, why the heck am I so worried that they won't like me, you know, because it's kind of eating you in the moment you're unable to really be there. And so what we're going to talk about um, today is not how to find ways so that they will like you, or here's the foul proof recipe in eight points or method or technique that you can apply and they will always like you because um, there's no thing out there, there's no method, no technique, no teaching, no recipe that will make you more you. Um, so we're not gonna do that. We're gonna look at what's actually happening and, and then understanding that what you can do about it. So what's actually happening is you have been raised in a culture, in a conditioning, in a programming where you go to school and you're expected to have a certain behavior, to think a certain way, to feel a certain way, to express yourself a certain way, to eat at a certain time, to pee at a certain time, to learn certain things. In short, to behave the way you're told to behave. And when you don't behave the way you're told to behave, there's consequences, there's punishment, there's shame, there's humiliation, there's withdrawal of love from your parents. Even momentarily, it's very wounding for a child and when you do behave like a good boy or a good girl and that people like you around at school or at home then you get rewards you get compensated you get validation you get belonging you get that you fit and that you're loved and that you're safe right so maybe you're starting to see where i'm going you've been raised and taught and programmed and encouraged and forced and um, coerced to be liked. So you're very, very, very good, very apt, very capable, very professional, highly, highly trained into making sure that people like you. Because since you were born, you've learned your lesson. When people like me and I behave like they want me to, no, yeah, like they want me to, I get the validation, I get the love, I get the safety, I get the, the goodies. When I do not behave like people like me, no, like people want me to behave, I'm getting mixed up, 
then I don't get the goodies. I don't get the validation. I get withdrawal of love. I get punishment. I get shame. I get humiliation. All of those things don't work, right? So if you see what's happening, you're this little thing, you come and as you grow, this is imprinted into your system, into your wiring. You're being told to behave, to think, to feel, to talk, to move a certain way so that others will be happy. You're being taught over and over and over, day after day, minute after minute, to be liked because that is the key to success. That is the key to being safe, to being validated, to being loved, to fit, to belong, all of the stuff. It will give you everything if you're a good boy or a good girl, if you are liked. So inevitably, when you've grown that way, that's the best thing you can do. You're incredible at it. And so you get to an audition and suddenly there's a split because suddenly you know that there's a part of you that will go straight into being a good boy or a good girl, doing it right, making sure you please them, making sure they like you so that you book the job because that's an automated system in you. It's like a machine. You've been built that way. You've been conditioned that way. But then there's the artist in you that's there in the moment uniquely, just like you can in a very unique way. And that uniqueness, that instinct, that free part of you, that really deep, core, truthful part of you shows up and goes, well, I, I'm an artist. I want to I wanna do this my way. But then you've got that other part of you that's like, hell no. We know how that goes. We remember that time that we were just not wanting to sit down in class and we got humiliated in front of everyone. Or we said that thing that we liked and we got humiliated in front of everyone. Or we didn't say the thing that the teacher wanted me to say. And we got humiliated in front of everyone. And I lost some friends, etc. So you remember those traumas, those wounds. And so part of you again wants to open, to be really there, to be really present, to be really in the moment and be truly alive, engaged as an artist, open for your character to defend what they are about, what their story is about. And then there's an ego part of you that's been trained its entire life for decades to behave, to shut the fuck up, to be liked, to do it right, to look good, to please. And you can do that really well, but it has nothing to do with art. It's actually the opposite. Art exists to fight that. Art exists to keep our hearts alive. Art exists because it wakes us up. It reminds us of what humanity truly is, of what beauty, of what the singularity, the uniqueness of who each and every one of us is. And it goes directly against all that conditioning and that wiring that makes you want to be liked. The second you're, you're taking steps on trying to be liked, you're walking away from you from your heart, from your core, from your truth, from your freedom, from your instinct. The second you do it, the second you try to be liked, you're out. You're no longer here. And guess what happens when you are no longer here in your tape, in your audition, on set? You can't be seen because you're no longer here. You can't book because they can't see you. You can't be remembered by the casting director because you're no longer here. You are not present. You left the building. You're trying to go in the next moment, which is delusional because it doesn't exist, to try and please, to try and be liked, to try and manipulate the outcome. If you're doing that, you're in your ego. You're not in your art. Your art is to give yourself up, to open your heart to open your instrument so much so that it's available for another soul to come in, your character, and to fight for his or her needs. That's what your responsibility is. Your responsibility is never and has never been to be liked. But of course you were raised like that again, right? So what's the job here? What can you do when you catch yourself really being worried about not being liked? It's great information. Don't run away from that. Don't deny it. It's great information. You're an artist. You're a pro. 
wow, when I have an opportunity, when I have an audition, when I'm on set, I leave the building. I leave my instrument. I leave my artistic self and I try to go in pleasing and being liked. Okay, so now you know that. So now you know what to do. What to do is not to go to another acting class to learn about acting and to walk further and further and further and further away from you. What there is to do is to undo all of the conditioning, all of the programming, all of the indoctrination, because I'll tell it how it is, so that you can recover yourself. So that when you show up, you show up. Not like this, not with a mask of conditioning, not with a mask of trying to be liked and trying to please and being in your ego. That is not you. That's a tiny little uninteresting part of you that doesn't fulfill you, that won't fulfill the character, that won't fulfill the director, and will not, definitely will not impact an audience. So no one wins if you go in your ego, right? And it's not just a quick decision to go in your ego. The problem is you've spent decades behaving like that because you were taught to. It's not your fault. It's just a result of conditioning. As an artist, it is your duty, it is your responsibility to get in that state where you are free, you are here, you are deep, you are truthful, and art inevitably ensues, and booking inevitably ensues, even if it's not for this role. If it's not for this role, and you're really there, and your heart is really open, and you're really fighting for your character's needs rather than you wanting to book and you wanting to be liked, you will be seen. You will be noticed. You will stand out. Because there's only one like you. Not because I say so. Because if you really show up, you will be different than others. There will be no competition. You will be seen. Because everyone else is conditioned and everyone else is trying to fit and belong and do it right. So if you do it your way, inevitably, art happens, right? So when that happens, the result happens. When they see you, when they actually get a sense of who you are as a human being, how the life flows through you, not how well you read lines, not how well you act, that's nothing compared to your presence as a true human being. When they get a feeling for that, even if it's not the right role, they'll rewrite something for you. They'll give you another part. They'll cut something out. They'll make you another gender. They'll change the race. They'll change everything. It happens all the time in our community. People go in for one role, get out with the other one. Because it doesn't matter if you're the type. If you show up, they want to work with you they'll make it happen, right? So I hope that this makes sense. Um, if it does, DM us. We can send you some more information. We have a free training um, that you can find in the link in the bio or in the about section. It's called um, Stop Trying to Be a Good Actor So You Have a Chance at Being Great. Uh, that will help you to take the first steps. If you want to go deeper, dive fully right away, Send us a DM, let us know, and then we can send you some information. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye.